The Milky Way is only a small sample of the hundreds of sextillions of stars that exist in the universe. We will never be able to know the exact size of the largest star in the entire universe due to this incomprehensible distance. We will never be able to measure the vast majority of stars because they are too far away. We found plenty of giants in our backyard, some dwarf our sun, and others could swallow the entire solar system. The league table of the biggest stars changes constantly as more accurate estimates of distance and size are made. If we are looking for the largest discovered star today, then we will find the stunning UI Scuti. UI Scuti was discovered in the 1800s, but it has been reclassified as the largest star since the beginning of this decade. It is a massive star with some insane numbers. Today, we will be looking at the profile of this Titan, its history, the possibilities for exoplanets, and the fact that this beast could reach the end stages of its life very soon. UI Scuti, a red hypergiant variable star located approximately 5,100 light years away from Earth in the constellation Scutum, is a pulsating red hypergiant. This star is located in a central galactic location similar to Sagittarius A, the black hole at the center of the Milky Way. The star's radius is 1,700 times greater than our Sun at just seven astronomical units in diameter. We predict that despite its massive size difference, the star's mass will only be between seven and ten times that of the Sun. This is far from the record of the most massive star ever discovered. The reason for this is that star size and mass do not correlate linearly. It's also difficult to estimate the mass of this star because we haven't seen much in its neighboring region to compare it with. UI Scuti, which is located in the Milky Way's Cygnus Rift, is 400,000 times more luminous than the Sun. It is not visible with the naked eye, and it does not appear bright at night due to its position in the Cygnus Rift, an area of the Milky Way that has dark bands of dust. UY Scuti also lies close to the zone of avoidance. This is an area of the night sky that we cannot see because of the Milky Way galaxy plane. UY Scuti is not as hot as you might think, given its brightness. It's quite the opposite. The surface temperature of the star is just below 3000 Kelvin. Comparatively, the surface temperature of the Sun is almost twice as high at 5778 Kelvin. Size does not always correlate with temperature, just as it does not correlate with mass. It is because these stars are rarely in their main sequence, which is the most critical part of a star's lifespan. This happens when the hydrogen that was used to create the star is fusing in its core. As the hydrogen fuel in the core of a star runs out, heavier substances such as helium will be fused. The outer layers of the core continue to fuse hydrogen. The star expands and balloons to hundreds of times its original size when this happens. UI Scuti is created in this way. The vast majority of red giants and red supergiants become so big. It also means it's in its dying phase. You'd expect the star to be at least several billion years old, given that it's no longer in its main sequence. This post-production stage doesn't give us much information about the age of the star. This star could be billions of years old, but due to its size and the fact that it is losing so much mass, this instability may indicate that it is only a few million years old and has a short lifespan. This instability does not tell us the age of the star, but it does indicate that it is a young, inefficient star with a short lifespan. This star is, as we have already mentioned, the largest star known in the galaxy. Its diameter, how can we put it into perspective? This impressive volume would allow you to fit the sun into the star more than 5.1 billion times. It would take photons traveling at light speed about 14 and a half seconds to circle around our sun, but for UI Scuti, it would take a good seven hours. Seven hours at the speed of light is the fastest possible travel in the universe. If you were to fly around the world at a human-like speed, like if you were flying a Boeing 777 standard airplane, it would take over 1,200 years to complete a single circle at the normal speed. 
If you were to put UI Scuti in the middle of our solar system, it would be seven astronomical units larger than the rest of the system, even if the orbit of Saturn was not included. This star could swallow five planets, the asteroid belt, and 82 moons. We can't be sure of UI Scuti's mass, but we do know that it is ejecting mass as its life nears its end. It loses mass at about 5.8 times 10 to the minus 5 solar masses per year. That's 0 0.00058 solar masses. It may seem insignificant, however, in tons. Our solar mass is 2 times 10 to 27. This amount, while not disastrous when spread over the whole surface, is still ejecting many millions of trillions of tons of solar radiation each year. It is much more than an average star. It has a significant extrasolar atmosphere of gas and dust, which is another sign that it will go supernova soon. UI Scuti is a star that's so far away and so obscured by many variables. We know a great deal about it. It wasn't always this way. Our fascination with the immense has driven us to adapt and improve our methods of star observation and cataloging. How did the profile of a star begin? UI Scuti first appeared in the 1860 survey by German astronomers from the Bonn Observatory. You may know that most stars are named for the catalog or survey they were recorded in, such as Messier objects, Kepler objects, the Henry Draper catalog, etc. UI Scuti is no exception. The star was discovered during the Bonner Durchmusterung Stellar Catalog Survey. It was then declared to be the 5,055th star between 12 and 13 degrees south, originally BD 125055. In the years following, the brightness appeared to have changed when it was surveyed once again. This led to the discovery of the variable star. The different types of pulsating variable stars are all a result of the changing brightness and size of the star due to its surface layers expanding and contracting. Astrophysicists find variable stars invaluable. We can learn more about a star's interior by studying variable stars. Main sequence stars such as the Sun tend to be stable. Outward pressure and gravity-induced inward pressure are balanced in a stable equilibrium. Variable stars vary and pulsate based on how fast the radiation escapes from the outer and core layers of the star. BD 12 5055 was reclassified as the 38th variable in the constellation Scutum due to an international protocol used for recording variable stars. The title UI Scuti was given to it. UI Scuti's pulse rate is considered irregular. However, it appears to have roughly a period of 740 days or a little more than two Earth calendar years. We didn't know the size of this star until relatively recently because it was so obscured. UI Scuti was not re-estimated until 2012. Its size is now estimated to be 1700 solar radii. This puts it above the previous largest star, Vui Canis Majoris, although we are almost certain that UI Scuti is the largest star ever discovered. This is not definitive. We face many challenges when measuring stars, including the light from the Milky Way. The distance of UI Scuti from Earth also plays a role. We can't be sure of the distance because we don't know its exact location. VY Canis Majoris was the previous largest star and was well known amongst the scientific community. We have refined our estimates in recent years, despite the fact that there were well-defined error margins. The star was initially estimated to be over 3,000 times the size of the Sun. However, this has been revised and now the range is between 1420 solar radii to 2000 solar radii. This is still a large margin. VY Canis Majoris's radius is likely to be closer to 1500 solar radii than the 2000 solar radii estimate. UI Scuti is estimated to have a radius of approximately 1708 solar radii. Even at the lower estimate, the red Hyper giant is larger than 1,500 times the Sun.
other stars are also in the same league as VY Canis Majoris, but their estimates are less accurate. We always compare stars based on their lower bound estimates. For example, VY Canis Majoris' size is 1420 solar radii, which doesn't really do it justice. WEO G64 is a star in the Large Magellanic Cloud, a satellite galaxy near the Milky Way. It is uncertain what its parameters are, but it could be between 1500 and 2500 times larger than the Sun. This would make it one of the largest stars ever discovered. It is unfortunately surrounded by dust and much farther away than the majority of stars we analyze. This boundary is unlikely to shrink anytime soon until technology improves. Westerland 1, 26 is a little closer to home. It has strong radio emission, but its size is very vaguely estimated with an upper and lower limit of more than 1,000 solar radii. HD 143183 is a red giant with more accurate estimates, possibly just under 1,500 solar radii, which is very similar to the size of the previous largest star. The last two stars are from RSGC 1, this is a young cluster of stars within the Milky Way. These are also estimated to be just below 1500 solar radii. UI Scuti is still a possibility, but it's not the only one. The largest star is the one that wins the grand prize, at least for now. One thing to think about is, how does the star's massive size affect its ability to support life? UI Scuti, like most stars, may have a planetary system orbiting around it. However, we will probably never be able to observe it because of its small apparent visual magnitude and sheer size. We can detect planets orbiting stars through small dips in brightness. This is indicative of a planet passing in front of the star and blocking a tiny fraction of the star's light. UI Scuti has the problem of being so massive that even if a planet were to pass in front, it would be too small and insignificant to be detected. The pulsing of the star and its fluctuations would also distort these small changes in magnitude. A considerable amount of matter is constantly being ejected from the star. It is statistically unlikely for UI Scuti to have its own planetary system, given its size and the amount of stellar radiation it would emit. How far would it need to be from the Earth to support a civilization similar to that of humans? To be in its habitable zone? We are approximately one astronomical unit away from the Sun, 150 million kilometers. The habitable zone for UI Scuti is likely to be around 1.5 trillion kilometers or about 1,000 astronomical units. This means that light and heat would need a month to reach a planet in that zone, it also means you'd need to spend about 10,000 years orbiting the star to complete one full year. The seasons on such a planet, at least as we know them, would last for 2,500 years. It is likely that entire civilizations would never know another season other than the one in which they were born. That's a vast amount of time. Any intelligent civilization would find it impossible to comprehend. You wouldn't see them as seasons but rather as climate changes. The odds are that if the star supported life in any form, it would have happened at some stage during the main sequence. This star is too unstable and emits too much radiation for life to have a realistic chance at evolving. There's something else. UI Scuti will only burn for one million more years. The ejection of mass from the star signals its end. Stars outside the main sequence only burn for a fraction of the time that they would during the main sequence because they are ejecting outer layers and becoming less stable. The hydrogen fuel that initially formed the core of UI Scuti has now been consumed, and the star is currently fusing heavier elements into oxygen and carbon. This process will continue until all the helium in the core has been fused, leading to a physically unsustainable point. UI Scuti is believed to be able to evolve into another stage before going supernova. This could include becoming a yellow hypergent, a blue hypergent, or a wolf rayette star, all three of which produce strong stellar winds, expose the core, and mark the beginning of the end. UI Scuti, a metal-rich massive star, is located in the Milky Way galaxy, suggesting that it will eventually fuse into iron. 
Once the star does this, it won't be able to produce heavier elements, and its outward radiation, which was responsible for its incredible expansion, won't be strong enough to balance the star's gravity. This will cause the outer layers to collapse in a supernova. This won't just be a simple supernova, it will be a hypernova equivalent to a hundred supernova. Supernova explosions release high levels of gamma rays that can decimate all nearby planetary systems. Earth is far enough away from the explosion not to be affected, but it's still set to happen in about a million years. On a cosmological scale, a million years is just a blip. If UI Scuti evolves into a wolf ray at star before this explosion, the gases released by the supernova could serve as incubators for the creation of new stars after its death, in a process like a phoenix rising from the ashes. The fate of the dead core will depend on how much mass is lost during the hypernova. If the core is still intact and has a mass more than four times that of the sun, it will collapse into itself, forming a black hole. If not, it will form a neutron star. As we've already noted, UI Scuti is not an especially massive star. If it loses the majority of its mass, it won't be large enough to become the black hole that you might expect from such a large star. UI Scuti, a beacon of creation, is only found in the small sample of the Milky Way galaxy that we can observe. It seems presumptuous to label UI Scuti as the largest star in the universe when there are an estimated 2 trillion galaxies in the universe and many more beyond our observable boundaries. Here's an exciting thought. If humanity manages to colonize and survive in the Milky Way galaxy, for approximately three and a half trillion years, we may be around to see the Milky Way collide with Andromeda. Our nearest neighbor will bring with it almost one trillion stars to strengthen our galactic family. Imagine the new records we could discover with a compound galaxy that contains nearly three times as many stars as we currently have. It's still a long way off and there are many scientific hurdles to overcome. Thank you for watching and keep reaching for the stars.